Hello, and welcome to Astrophotography, Exploring Celestial Mysteries. I'm Dr. Randall Light. I will be your tour guide. I acquired these images over several years using a Nikon digital single lens reflex camera for astrophotography and camera lenses from 15 to 600 millimeters and a telescope with a 10 inch mirror that with a focal length of 2000 millimeters. Many of the images are the result of combining up to 36 images with software for this task. Exposure times ranged from 15 seconds to 16 minutes per exposure. The images were processed with Adobe Photoshop and PixInsight software. This audio tour will use some terms which may be somewhat unfamiliar. Some definitions will help. Distances in astronomy are well astronomical. Distance is measured in light years. One light year is the distance light travels in one year, or about 7 trillion miles. Shorter distances are measured in light minutes or light seconds. The size of an object in the sky is measured in degrees. There are 360 degrees in a circle. The sun and the moon both occupy one half a degree of the sky. The term nebula or the plural nebulae will be used frequently. A nebula is a collection of gas and dust in space. There are three types of nebulae. An emission nebula is a hot energized collection of gas, usually hydrogen gas, emitting hydrogen alpha or pink light. An absorption nebula is a collection of cold gas and dust, preventing transmission of light from behind it being visible. A reflection nebula is a collection of fine dust particles reflecting light from a very bright nearby star. Some of the images in this exhibit are of objects that have common names. Not all objects in the sky have a common name. All objects visible in the night sky are listed in a variety of catalogs. The catalog number for each object will be listed. The new general catalog is abbreviated NGC and is followed by a four-digit number. Messier catalog objects were named by Charles Messier, a French astronomer living in Paris in the late 1700s. He was interested in comets. His work on comets did not come to much, but the list he made of 120 objects that were not comets is a list of some of the most beautiful objects in the sky that are easily seen the naked eye or a telescope. Star clusters. There are two types of star clusters, open star clusters and globular star clusters. Open star clusters are groups of stars gravitationally locked and moving together. They appear as a group, but there is space between them. Globular star clusters are clumped. There may be 100,000 to several million stars close, so close together that you, it's hard to see the space between them. These star clusters are typically located on the circumference of our Milky Way galaxy. Planetary nebulae. This is a misnomer. Early astronomers mistook these structures for planets when they are actually the residual of stars that have reached the end of their life. Stars about the size of our sun, when they exhaust their fuel, become red giants, then white dwarfs, then shed their outer shell and become planetary nebulae. Stars many times larger than our sun, when they reach the end of their life, go supernova, shed their outer shell, and collapse into a neutron star. The residual atmosphere becomes the planetary nebula. The tour begins on the left side of the room. 
This emission nebula in Orion is designated M43. It is part of the Great Orion Nebula, but is separated from it by a prominent dark lane. It contains a small cluster of newly formed stars. The central star, Nu Orionis, is a young star that produces most of the ultraviolet light that excites this nebula. The Running Man Nebula, catalog number Sharpless 279, is a reflection nebula in the constellation Orion. It is both an emissions nebula and a reflection nebula. It is adjacent to the Great Orion Nebula. Image number three is the Helix Nebula, also known as the Eye of God. It is a planetary nebula designated NGC 7293 in the constellation Aquarius. This is the closest planetary nebula to Earth. It is one of the largest planetary nebulae. It is 17.7 arc minutes in diameter and 10,600 years old. It was formed when a star similar to our sun reached the end of its life. It exhausted all of its hydrogen fuel by fusing it into helium. As it cooled, it expanded and became a red giant and subsequently became a white dwarf collapsing into a very small, dense star. It then shed its outer atmosphere and became a planetary nebula. This is the Dumbbell Nebula. It too is a planetary nebula. It is designated M27 in the constellation Volpecula. It was the first planetary nebula discovered by Charles Messier in 1764. It is 100 times as bright as our sun. The outer layer is excited by high levels of radiation from its central white dwarf star. The Ring Nebula, M57, is a planetary nebula in Lyra. It is the prototype of planetary nebulae in the summer sky. It is also a remnant of a sun-like star reaching the end of its life. It is a popular planetary nebula for observation and photography. The Crab Nebula, designated M1, is a planetary nebula in the constellation Taurus. It is the most famous and obvious of the planetary nebulae it is the result of a star going supernova. This was documented by the Chinese in 1054. The supernova was visible in the daytime sky for over a month. This nebula is a remnant of that supernova. It has a neutron star at its center, rotating at 30 times per second. The Witch's Head Nebula, catalog number IC2118, is a reflection nebula in the constellation Eridanus. This is a very large reflection nebula. It is composed of very fine dust particles that reflect the light from the nearby star Rigel. The Western Veil Nebula, NGC 6960, is an emissions nebula in the constellation Cygnus. The Western Veil Nebula is a rare supernova remnant. When a star went supernova five to 8,000 years ago, the Veil Nebula complex was created. The shock wave from that explosion is still exciting the remaining gas in this nebula, making it glow. The Eastern Veil Nebula, catalog NGC 6995, is an emission nebula in Cygnus. The Eastern Veil Nebula was created at the same time that the Western Veil Nebula was created by a supernova. The reddish-pink areas are areas of hot hydrogen gas emitting light at the hydrogen alpha wavelength. The blue-green areas are gas emitting light at the oxygen 3 wavelength. The next three images are all related. 
the center image is a wide field view of the Orion region. At the top right is the great Orion Nebula. Toward the bottom left is the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula. Image 10 on the left shows the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula. The Flame Nebula is an emission nebula divided by a dark lane or absorption nebula. On the right is the Horsehead Nebula. It is an absorption nebula blocking light from the bright emission nebula behind it. The bright star above the Flame Nebula is Alnitak, the end star in Orion's belt. Image number 12 on the right is the Great Orion Nebula, M42. It is an emission nebula in Orion. It is the brightest nebula in the sky. It can be seen with the naked eye as a fuzzy patch in the Orion sword area. It is an active area of star formation. Many of the stars are less than 100,000 years old. Historically, in 1880, it was the first deep sky object photographed. The red-pink color is again the hydrogen alpha color of ionized hydrogen. The blue color is light from the central star reflected by fine dust particles. To the left of the Great Orion Nebula, we again see the Running Man Nebula. The Rosette Nebula, catalog number NGC 2237, is an emission nebula in the constellation Monoceros. The Rosette Nebula is a large emission nebula covering 2.5 degrees of the sky. This is five times the diameter of the moon. The stars associated with the Rosette Open Cluster are young hot stars. The nebula is energized by ultraviolet radiation from these stars. Stellar winds from these stars have created the open central area. The stellar winds also exert pressure on the interstellar hydrogen alpha cloud compressing it. This results in new star formation. The Flying Horse Nebula, Sharpless 2-142, is an emission nebula in Cephas. The Flying Horse Nebula is also known as the Wizard Nebula, is a faint emission nebula associated with an open star cluster. The Trifid Nebula, M20, is a nebula that contains emission, reflection, and absorption nebulae. It is in the constellation Sagittarius. It is one of the most beautiful and famous objects in the sky. The absorption nebula divides the emission nebula into three parts. It is thought to be about 300,000 years old. The Bubble Nebula, NGC 7635, is an emission nebula in Cassiopeia. It is a bright nebula created as a shell around star SAO20575. This star produces an intense stellar wind and radiation. It is 45 more times massive than our sun and thousands of times more luminous. It is consuming energy at a very high rate. If our sun consumed energy at this rate, its entire energy supply would be exhausted in 10,000 years. This is an image of the central region of the Lagoon Nebula, catalog M8, an emissions nebula in Sagittarius. It is a glowing cloud of interstellar gas divided by a dark lane. The nebula is an active area of star formation and has a cluster of young stars illuminating part of the nebula. Rho Ophiuchi Nebula Catalog IC4604 contains emissions, reflection, and absorption nebulae. It is located in the constellation Ophiuchus. This nebula has multiple areas of bright and dark nebulosity. They're part of a much larger but invisible molecular cloud. 
about 1.5 million years ago, a massive supernova occurred, sending a tremendous shockwave through the molecular cloud. This triggered and is still triggering star formation even today. The Flaming Star Nebula, IC405, is an emission nebula in the constellation Auriga. The Flaming Star Nebula is an emissions nebula and has a reflection nebula in front of it that is illuminated by the star A.E. Auriga. This star is moving through this region of space, illuminating the gas and dust and giving the appearance of a flaming star. The Elephant Trunk Nebula, IC 1396, is an emission nebula in Cephas. This is a very large area of nebulosity and an open star cluster. This nebula measures 3 by 2 degrees. It is a collection of interstellar dust and gas with a central dark region. The bright rim is energized by an energetic blue star. This is an area of ongoing star formation. A solar eclipse is an infrequent event that occurs when the Earth moves into the shadow behind a new moon preventing sunlight from reaching the Earth. At totality, the solar corona becomes visible. The corona has a temperature of 1 to 10 million degrees centigrade hotter than the surface of the sun. Its temperature is 5,600 degrees centigrade. The next full solar eclipse visible in central Texas will be in April of 2024. Covered Wagon Star Trail The Earth's axis points at Polaris, the North Star. As the Earth rotates on its axis, other stars appear to rotate around Polaris. This image combines 60 exposures of 4 minutes each to produce these star trails. Solar Sunspot and Plage Sunspots are produced by a strong local magnetic field that cools the surface of the sun from about 5,600 degrees centigrade to about 4,000 degrees centigrade. These areas appear darker, and one can be seen in the upper area of this image. A solar plage is a bright area. Plage is French for beach, and the white spot surrounded by Visible magnetic lines of force is seen in the lower part of this image. This is a photo of our moon exposed to show the natural color that is usually present but hidden by the glare from reflected light of the sun. Comet Neowise over Regina Chalorum Observatory Comet Neowise is seen over the Regina Chalorum Observatory, a private observatory in Wheelock, Texas. The observatory houses two telescopes. One of them is my 10-inch reflecting telescope that I use to make many of these images. Near Total Lunar Eclipse a lunar eclipse occurs when the moon moves into the shadow created by the Earth. This is an image of a recent lunar eclipse that is almost complete. 98% of the moon's surface is eclipsed, a small sliver of area lit by the sun is seen on the left. The World Pool Galaxy M51 is a spiral galaxy in the constellation Canis Vernatici. The World Pool Galaxy, interacting with the much smaller galaxy NGC 5195, is one of the best known spiral galaxies. It is similar in size, mass, and luminosity to both the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies. The intense spiral structure is the result of galaxy NGC 5195 coming from behind the Whirlpool Galaxy, passing through it about 500 million years ago, 
and then passing back through it about 100 million years ago. The Triangulum Galaxy M33 is a spiral galaxy in the constellation Triangulum. The Triangulum Spiral Galaxy is the third largest galaxy in the local group after the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies. The numerous red areas are hydrogen alpha regions of energized hydrogen gas. The largest is NGC 604 and is one of the largest known hydrogen alpha regions. It contains over 200 recently formed hot stars with masses ranging from 15 to 60 solar masses. The Triangulum Spiral Galaxy is moving toward the Andromeda Galaxy and may be gravitationally bound to it. Andromeda and the Triangulum Galaxies are both moving toward the Milky Way. The Andromeda Galaxy M31 is a spiral galaxy in the constellation Andromeda. It is slightly larger than the Milky Way. It occupies about six moon diameters, or three degrees, in the night sky. It is the closest spiral galaxy to our Milky Way galaxy. Red areas are hydrogen alpha regions of star formation. It is a mirror image of the Milky Way galaxy and allows study of galactic features that can't be seen in our own galaxy. It has two accessory galaxies, M32 and M110. M32 lost over half its mass when it passed through the Andromeda galaxy over 200 million years ago. M31 is moving toward the Milky Way at about 100 kilometers per second and will collide with the Milky Way in about 2.5 billion years. Pleiades M45 is an open star cluster in the constellation Taurus. Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, is an easily seen open star cluster in the night sky. It is one of the clusters nearest the Earth. It has been known since antiquity and recognized by many cultures. It is mentioned in the Bible in the books of Amos and Job. Light from the bright stars is reflected by gas and fine dust, producing the blue, fluffy nebulosity. Omega Centauri NGC 5139 is a globular star cluster in the constellation Centaurus. Omega Centauri is the brightest globular cluster in the sky. It is 10 times larger than a typical star cluster and it contains over 2 million stars. Because it has been found to have a black hole at its center, it is believed to be the residual of a dwarf galaxy that once collided with the Milky Way. The double cluster NGC 869 and NGC 884 are two open star clusters. Each is about 30 arc minutes in diameter or about the size of the moon. The young hot blue stars and the older, cooler yellow stars produce a stunning view through a telescope. Open clusters in Gemini. M35 and NGC 2158 are open clusters in Gemini. M35 is a bright open cluster which occupies an area of sky slightly larger than the moon. NGC 2158 is a tight open cluster that is 10 times older than M35 with yellow stars. It appears smaller because it is much further away. The Hercules Cluster M13 is a globular star cluster in the constellation Hercules. Globular clusters are large groups of stars tightly held together by gravity. This cluster is thought to be about 12 billion years old and contains predominantly red stars. M13 contains several hundred thousand stars. The Milky Way at Fort Davis. 
The Milky Way is a barred spiral galaxy with four spiral arms and a central black hole of 4.1 million solar masses. It is the second largest galaxy in the local group after the Andromeda galaxy. It is about 12 billion years old. It is estimated there are between 100 and 400 billion stars in it. Our solar system is 26,000 light years from the center of the Milky Way in the Orion Spur. The Milky Way. This image of the Milky Way shows several objects, including from bottom to top the Lagoon, Trifid, Omega, and Eagle Nebulae. In the center between the Trifid and Omega Nebulae is the Sagittarius star cloud. The Sagittarius star cloud M24 is a pseudo star cluster in Sagittarius. The Sagittarius star cloud is a pseudo cluster of stars spread over thousands of light years in the Norma spiral arm of the Milky Way. These stars are seen through a tunnel in the interstellar dust that otherwise blocks much of our view toward the center of our galaxy. This concludes our tour of the Arts Council of the Brazos Valley exhibit, Astrophotography, Exploring Celestial Mysteries by Randall Light, M.D. Thank you for participating in the tour.